house. I chose it because I wanted to challenge myself. The house is called in Kajijik and it is made by the women. The fence is made by the men and it is called in Kang. This, this is the fence. The in Kang. In Kang. The materials that I used are number one, soil that I turned into clay that I used for the fireplace, I used for the pot and for the people. It was free. Um, second, a um, Masai Shuka, which was 200 shillings. Number three, um, um, broom bristle, which was free. Number four, cake board given by our cake lady, which was free. Number five, grass I cut from the garden, which was free. Number six, cotton wool to make fire. Nadim gave me, which Nadim. was free. Yeah. Nadim. <laughs> Where is Nadim? Awesome. Please tell Nadim thank you. You took part. Uh, what, did Nadim what did Nadim give you? He gave me some of his cotton wool to make the fire. Ah. Hmm. Never take anybody for granted. <laughs> Number seven, hey, it was free. Number eight, cardboard box found in the house, which was free. Number nine, Uhu Blue, which was 255 shillings. Number 10, Akron, Akron. Akron Colors, which was 650 shillings. And in total, it was 1100 shillings. Well, this house is expensive. It is not a joke. So, Nadia, uh, how much would you think you'll sell it? Um, I'm not sure. Go and plan. You, you need to have a business mind there. Thank you very much. The Maasai lady is done. Any questions to her? from my auntie and also this I bought with with what I made mm -hmm. and and the earrings I, I was supposed to make them for the for the women's um, necklace but then we decided to use some other beads that we had at home mm -hmm. um, yeah very expensive Maasai lady very expensive very, very beautiful indeed. Awesome! Any questions from the, 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 the group? Yes, Jordania? How long did it take you? It took me two days. Two days to build. Yes, Madiba? What did you make from? The roof. The roof. What did you use? The roof, I used the clay. And then I added some some hair on top with a bit of uhu glue to make like the roof. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. I think that is amazing. And I added some sticks inside so that it can like lift up and not fall down. Uh -huh. And you know that is what a Maasai and Kajijik, uh, they do. They also put sticks to hold on yeah. the mud. Thank you very much. It yes, madam. Chiba, what did you put inside? Um, inside is just hollow because I, I was going to put the fire and the person inside, but then, but then I was, but then you couldn't see it because that it's like so big, and then we had like a tiny door, mm -hmm. so we decided to put everything outside. Awesome, awesome. That was a very clever of you, so that we can see exactly what entails uh, when you get in. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. There is a lot of individuality that comes across with any kind of project, especially with building. I will teach, I will present to them, I will give them all the knowledge that they will need. But at the end of the day, they will come up with their own. And so the individuality that you saw today was basically coming from them. You saw some came from the western part of the world, others focused on actually in Kenya and the Kenyan community and especially from their own tribes. That one is fully appreciative of where they've come from and the cultures. So it's totally individual and that is the beautiful part about the curriculum. You individualize it to your own um, self and comfort. It actually starts from the teacher himself or herself. Because as you see me coming into class, I don't come in with a textbook. I actually come prepared, meaning I have to be confident enough when I'm delivering any new knowledge or information. That way, they tend not only imitate, but they carry it in them. So when I'm presenting about the house project, or even in math, the teacher comes in fully prepared to offer this, uh, 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 this information to them. And so that actually is transferred. It's actually basically transferred to the, to the children themselves and they, it is engraved in them and thereof now they can actually present it uh, confidently because they have researched very well, just like the teacher.
What is it called? Essa Iga. Essa Iga. Awesome. And you can see. Yeah. Even how you've dressed. And how kisses wear. Awesome. One of the things that we always focus on with a child is to look especially at the well-being, meaning holistically. So we have to look at a child from the physical, emotionally, socially, and also intellectually. One cannot work without the other. So well, the major reason why we have subjects, or outside there we call them subjects, here we call them blocks, we engage, they are fully engaging to the child. Today they've had a presentation um, in regards to house building and they, it actually it took three weeks for them to be able to come to this realization of building their own, especially choosing what they would like um, to build and much more to present to the community. The community here uh, entails the parents, the children, as well as the teachers and the administration. The first thing which I used, I, I shaped the box in, in a shape. Then, I, the roof, I carved it. Mm -hmm. Carved it, uh-huh. After carving it, I, I put the door. Uh -huh. I also carved it. Uh -huh. Then, I put uho glue all over. Uh -huh. Then I put, I started to put cotton wool all over. Then you started to put cotton wool all over. Yes. Awesome, awesome. And why are you dressed like that? It's hot. Yes. Yeah, why are you dressing up like that? I'm dressing up like this because of, of cold in, in, in the North Pole. He's dressing like that because it is very cold in the North Pole. And that is probably how they dress. So, very good. Would you, would you like somebody to ask you a question? Yes. Please, anyone who has a question, please, from the parents? Yes. How long did it take? It, it took? It took three days. Wow, awesome. Thank you. Uh-huh. An igloo. Thank you. Well done. I think you have also written, uh, did, uh, did you buy anything there? Yes. What did you buy and how much did it cost? I bought Uho glue. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much it cost? No. Not really. Yes. Uh -huh. I, I bought paint. Yes. It cost around 450. Around 450. Mm -hmm. Then the cardboard was easy to find. Yeah. Cotton wool, we just had it at home. Yeah. Scissors we used to cut some places. Yes. And then I wanted to measure. And paintbrush. Yes. Awesome. I think he has done tremendously well. We are happy with your work. You are going to be a builder next time. A real one. Well House building is not only theoretical. Yes, we study a lot to do with how people live not only human beings, but also animals. But we focused more theoretically on human beings. And majorly this came about because we live in shelters or homes, but do they know how they happen to become? Why do we live in these shelters? What is the importance? Because we can as well live in the forests. There's so much that entails having a home. Not only the building itself, but also love, and warmth amongst the family members. What house have you done, Ricky, today? I done this one. The Luo house. It is known as Asimba. Asimba is used by the young men. When they come of age, they or a rite of passage, they are built for or they build for themselves Asimba. And also for you, when you come of age, Ricky, you'll have your own house where you'll not live close to your dad and mom. Do you know that? Yeah. Yes. And you can see what is outside here. You can explain. What can you see here? 
I see the, the sun. The sand. And the, and the rocks. And the rocks. There are so many rocks. And grass. And grass. What else did you use to make your house, Ricky? Using what? What material? Um, material things. A box. I can see a box here. What else? What else? I can see some thatched roof. You also used glue. What is this, Ricky? I used glue to use the grass. The grass, yes. So he used glue for the grass. Well done, Ricky. I really appreciate what you have done. Yes, David. What have you made? I've made an iron sheet house. An iron sheet house? A Mabati house. You can turn it around so that they can see. That's a Mabati. But what have you used? Is this real Mabati, really? What have you made? Uh, what have you used? What material have you used? Straws. Straws. Ooh. And what else? An urubu. Uh huh. I can also see some grass here and there. What have you used there? I used paint. Mm hmm. And urubu. Mm hmm. Then I mixed them up. With cotton wool. Yeah, with cotton wool. Now, if you have any questions, please throw it to David and let's see whether he will have the answers for you. Yes, Kathy. So, what did you use to stick the? First of all, what did you use for the iron sheet? Oh, glue. This. There. Oh, glue. And what? And straws. And straws. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Straws. Uh huh. Anybody else? Yes, Mama Candy. I'm, I'm very impressed with your choice of uh, material, David. It's really, really impressive. Well done. Thanks. You said it loudly. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good. Um, anybody from here? Yes. Did you cut the straws when you were building? Did yeah. you cut the straws when you are building? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good. I think that is enough for now because of time and we are going to go to the next one. Well done, David. You cannot teach a child by themselves. You can only teach also the family itself. That way, the, fam the, the parents are fully in the curriculum. So even before I teach whatever I'm going to teach, I've already shared with my parents what I'm going to teach and why. So I also have to prepare the parents very well on what project we are going or what block we are going to do, what is entailed and where I would want them to come in. And so you have to have already talked them through, meaning you have already taken through them through a study of what is most important and why at that particular age they are supposed to be in it. Not only in my class, all through, all the way to high school, parents are fully engaged with the curriculum, not only the students. This house is uh, in Kajijik. And in Kajijik? And um, I used clay. Mm -hmm. Sticks. A beautiful house. A beautiful house and it is natural. And it is natural. It is beautiful and natural. Well done. But who makes such houses? The Maasai. The Maasai. Who builds the houses? The women. The women. Can you imagine? Women are the ones who build such houses. And you are a real one because you've done it. Awesome. 
Anybody who has a question for Malia? Uh, first for parents and then I come to you. There are so many hands up. Anyone? Raise your hand up. Yes, Mama Nadia. Hi, Maria. How long did it take you to, to, to make the house? Um, three days. Uh -huh. What was the process? Was it an easy one? No. It wasn't. You even thought twice of letting it go. Isn't it? But because you're not a person who gives up easily, you went ahead. Well done. Calvin. I wanted to ask, what did you use for the clothes? What did you use for the? Clothes is paint. Paint. She used paint for the clothes. Yes, Ethan. Uh huh. Yes, uh, Madiba. Where? How? Uh, just a bit loud, uh, louder. Where did you use the sticks? For. Where? Where did you? Why did you use the sticks for? It's to make the house stable. Sure. If there are no sticks, the house will not be stable. The mud will crumble down, and it will not be a real home. Well done, Malia Lynn. You have done really well. I am proud of you. Well done. For my house, I used I used a drawing card, and then I put four squares going down and two on the side so I could make flaps and stick it together. Mm -hmm. And then for the roof, I did the same, but now I made it using triangles instead of boxes. Mm. And how much everything cost? Mm -hmm. There's um, something here. What is this? This is tough. Tough? Tough. Tough? <laughs> this is tough. I'm, I need to learn how to... to it's like grass, but now um, some people put it on the lawn because the grass isn't able to grow. Oh, uh-huh. Now I'm learning. The two, um, how much everything cost uh -huh. was my, my drawing card that was white was 110. Mm -hmm. My second drawing card was silver mm -hmm. and it was 220. Mm -hmm. I got post colors um, for painting my bushes mm -hmm. and that was um, 245 mm -hmm. and then I used mm -hmm. all purpose you who blue mm -hmm. and that was 790, 790. 790 shillings yeah uh -huh. and then the total was 1360 this house is very expensive. I don't know who can buy it. Where, where do you find such houses? Because it's very expensive. You find them in many places, but where I, this house, I wanted to make it and it was from America. That's why. Now you understand it's why it's a brick house. It's a brick house. Now you understand why it is uh, expensive. We have to ship it. This is not a joke, girl. Now, what else do you need to tell them? Anything else? So you're the girl from America. Amazing. Any question? Oh, Mama, Mama, Mama Moses is so pleased. The girl from America. She's very pleased. Awesome. Good. Any questions? Yes, Catherine. Well done, Jody. I love the house. Thank you. So did you do it yourself or you had some help? I had help from Ethan. Of course. Wow. Of course. Tell them, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Any other question? Yes, Madam Nadia. How many days did it take you to do all of that? How many four days? days? It took her four days to build this house. And the lady from America wants to ask you a question. Yes. 
kinds of buildings and all these kinds of projects we also want them to be aware that these things they are there in the environment yes but you cannot just go and cut a tree and whoever has gone to cut that tree will have already to repay by pro probably planting two trees so one of the things that you might go to a, 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 a place where they sell the 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 the, the um, uh, what do we call them the planks of wood they will go and ask how much does it cost. They'll also go probably a further step and ask them, how did you get them? Did you plant another tree? But also the cost of whatever they're going to use is very important because eventually we are going to learn about money and the value of money and what the, uh, how money will if affect the building that we are going to do and how are we going to find this money. So all the houses that were made, some of them had the amount behind it, others had the materials found around the environment, but the major part also is for them to note that it is also money. You need money at times to have these things done and that we have to care for the structures that are around because they cost money. talking about here. Uh -huh. Number two. Clay. 58. Shillings. Shillings. Uh -huh. Number three. Blue. 64 shillings. Uh -huh. Cotton. 160. Shillings. So you have to, to get the total cost. The total cost means the you have to add all the... Uh -huh. The total cost was nine... was 936. 936. That is what it cost to build a house, not a joke. Yes? And this is how I built it. Mm -hmm. Day one, my dad helped me. Day one. I cut the, the cardboard. I, I stuck the pieces together using cello tape. I painted the cardboard white. Day two, my mom helped me. Mom. I painted the cardboard again for it to be thick white mm -hmm. and I put glue all over the igloo. I, I stuck the cotton wool on top of the igloo. I made the family that lives in the igloo. I stuck the igloo on the cardboard. Mm -hmm. I put the family on the cardboard with the with the snowman. And there is the family. Day three. I wrote the, the whole process. Day three wrote the whole process. Amazing. I think you're going to be a very good dentist because you can take people through how you go about it, isn't it? Awesome. So, any question? Uh, is there any more space and can we move in? Can, can, is there any more space? Can people move in? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, yes, you can move in. You can move in. Yeah, awesome. Any other question? Yes, Nelly? Sorry? Where can I buy cake? We can go to J 
junk. I bought all this stuff in Junction in Kapo. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Wawero? Asaka, that's a very nice interview. Uh, I might have missed it, but what did you make the family out of? Using clay. Thank you. Awesome. I have a question from Jordania. How are you able to shape it? How are you able to shape it? Because it's really looking like my, an eagle. You guys are amazing. My dad helped me to shape it in cardboard and cement. Please say thank you right now. Thank you. Well done. Good job. Um, I need somebody who has not spoken. David. To ask, yes, David. What did you use the material for the inside? Uh, I used I I used cardboard and I stuck the cardboard with cellotape. With cellotape. Well done. Thank you very much, Madam Dentist. Awesome. House building, whatever we've just completed has started from uh, another block that we did previously that was in measurement. They have gone through measurement, finding how the olden days people measured and they used their bodies and they used uh, uh, different kinds of tools that were around them, sticks. But they finally came to a point where in woodwork they ended up engaging with the wood itself and the hand saw and they actually numbered made a whole ruler that helped them eventually to make the kinds of houses that they did. So it has a connection, house building has a connection basically to math. So you cannot do one and leave the other. And that is how eventually the small houses that we have seen will eventually become one big project. This is a PC house normally built by men. And how I built it was I cut out a base made out of cotton and then I put the walls made out of cotton and then I put wood on the roof. I put tape and then I searched the roof mm -hmm. with grass. What is this? It's it's loofah to reflect the lightning. Loofah to reflect the lightning. Remember, lightning also destroys such houses. So this one sends it away, isn't it? Awesome. Uh huh. Uh huh. I can see some things outside there. What are those? And here I was supposed to put plants. Mm hmm. Uh, here, so these are pots. Yes. Mm hmm. Here is to collect drinking water to seal it. Mm hmm. What is it called? Esaiga. Esaiga. I like the way you say it. <laughs> say it again. Esaiga. Esaiga. Ay, gosh. I think I need to learn that language. So, any question to this man here? I have a question. Oh, you have a question for Mr. Aero, not me. It's a very, very impressive house. Days. Oh, yeah, it can tell, it can take that. Mm. I have Miss Nelly or Teki. What, is, what I would like to ask to them is what, what the function of a tiger? What is the function? Um, when uh, a kid, a boy becomes 10. When a boy is 10? When a boy is 10, uh -huh. he's big. They're not allowed to sleep under the same roof as the mom. Ooh. So they, someone builds the house and they move into the house. So does that mean when you get to be 10 and then you go back home, you'll have your own essay, yeah? That it may be. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Then that means we have to have our own Esaiga when we get to 10. Two more years, one more year to go. Awesome. Nadia, Mama Nadia. And there's a sieve, yeah, there's a sieve at the top that sieves. And then the rest will get in and it will be clean water to drink. Nice. Awesome. Any question? Yes, Mr. Calvin. I wanted to say, how did you make the pot? How did, the pot? I didn't make it. It used to be a candle. It used to be a candle holder. But of course it's from clay. Yes. Thank you very much. David does a yes, yes, David. And uh, yeah, first let me start with David, and then I go to Madiba. What, what? Which material did you use for the inside? Inside is just cotton. Just cotton. Awesome. Yes. When did you? When did you, when did he make it? When did you make it? Uh, yesterday. I finished yesterday. He finished yesterday, though he took like four, five, four days. Yeah? So it was not an easy task. Well done. Thank you very much. It was awesome. Can we all clap for Willem? Thank you. So finally, they will come up with an idea, which they will, they are themselves who are going to come and sit and discuss and say, what do we need as a school or what do we need as a class? So it's going to be a discussion, meaning we are going to engage them. And then they're going to choose the kind of building or structure that they, we will need as a class or as a school. And finally, we will build a real house. So that is the major reason. And that way they will have appreciation for the work that they do with their hands, the work that they see the carpenters do. And they also appreciate even the plumber who comes in and creates the passage of water, the sewage system, and everything else. So they will not just look at any structure and pass it, but they'll have questions and they'll be more curious to know how it was done. I made the house out of mud and the roof, I made it out of leaves and hay. And, and I put the sticks in, in so that the house can be stable and I made the, the entrance of the door uh -huh. and in the middle to hold the, to hold the roof, uh -huh. I put some mud inside and to put a long stick and I put them I put the roof and then I tied a leaf around it. Awesome. What kind of a house is this? Where does it is it found? It is it is an Ethiopian house. It is an Ethiopian house. And you can see she's all dressed up as an Ethiopian. So actually she's just come from Ethiopia and uh, she's showing us her heritage. And if you have any question to Michelle, please ask parents. Yes, uh, I was about to say Bathsheba, Mama Bathsheba. Oh, congratulations. The outfit is amazing. Thank you. Awesome. You use sticks to hold the man. Yes. Do you, yeah, the question is, do you use sticks to hold the mud? Yes. Very good. Awesome. Thank you very much. Awesome work. How many days did it take you again? One. One day. One day. This lady is not a joke. What? You have done it. Awesome. Um, world of education as most of us might know or might not know is that we do not teach reading and writing first uh, to a young child. A young child is expected, that's one of the major differences that we have with every other system. Uh, uh, and, and, and that majorly wants or needs a child first to engage with the environment that he or she lives in. 
until when the mind and the body has been fully engaged and that is at around six years of age now we say that this child is now getting ready to start reading and writing that is one of the major differences that we have as a curriculum as a world of school and not only here in Kenya but all over the world so we allow the child first to play we all know that uh, play is the work of a child if we do not play you might end up at, uh, later on finding yourself doing uh, funny stuff later isn't it so the curriculum really engages them in doing a young child is spe specifically uh, the specification for them is to play so that is one difference that we have with the rest of the curriculum and like the ones who i'm not going to say there it's an odd one but i'm going to say that we do not engage the mind first we engage the body first the wheel part the doing the cutting the kneading of the dough the the the, the morning rings where you find a teacher moving with his children you'll find this teacher painting with his children and there there and then this teacher or this child feels one and the same with the world now they come into primary primary school of course we start by teaching uh, and also schooling this child one to settle in you do not just pop uh, uh, go straight to the mind but also whatever we do in class must start from movement give storytellings that have a connection to their emotion or feeling then finally engage the mind i cannot start from the mind then feeling then doing if you come to a class set up in the world of class in any world of class you see a teacher moving with these children whether it is in mathematics whether it is in language arts whether it is in kiswahili whether it is in uh, it is in science science kinds of uh, subjects the teacher always engages the child in movement in drawing in painting that way there is this connection with whatever they are going to learn by the time you engage the mind this child has already embraced this information and is willing to work with it so you're not imposing but you are bringing them that is one difference whatever we teach we must have this child welcome this new information through movement through laughter and when you come to a class in the world of uh, in any world of school you'll see laughter you see the teachers engaging with these children you see connection amongst the child and the teacher so there's no fear amongst the two of them and, and that is where this child embraces this curriculum this is a tipi and uh, i went and i cut bamboo sticks for the clothes and um, we had some fabric at our house that I that I you and I used hot glue to glue the the poles up here and I and I used glue hot glue to um, to stick the fabric to the poles and I and the grass is play-doh and the and there's some water uh, and um, there is a deer coming to the water and the animals are called um, the this is a there are two bears this is called a moose this is a deer mm -hmm. this is a bison this is a squirrel and a fox and a crane Ooh, awesome and there's fire inside yeah. i can see some fire burning i have a hand up mr waweru joroge uh, hi hi very well very nicely done um, which was the most difficult part you found when you built it <laughs> which was the most difficult part you found when you built it um probably gluing the fabric to the poles. Mm. Did you say hot glue? 
Yes. What is hot glue? So hot glue is like um, it's a glue that you put glue sticks mm -hmm. into like a gun that warms the glue and then it comes out of the gun as glue. Ah, it's a whole process. An engineer in the making. Okay, then I have a question from Ethan. How long did it take you? It took me about four days. Four days. Not an easy task. Yes, Kusha? How did you make it? Um, so, I took, so I put this, I glued the sticks to the cardboard and then I, and then I glued the fabric to the sticks mm -hmm. and then I spread it and then I spread the Play-Doh mm -hmm. um, on the cardboard mm -hmm. and then I stuck the animals in. Cool! Well done! Awesome! Uh, how do you, uh, there's something that you don't have in your dress code. What is it? Um, Usually Red Indians have that. Why don't you have it? And what is it? Please say it loudly. Um, um, I would be wearing feathers, but, um, but I'm not because it's a special tradition in their culture. So if, and if we are not a part of their culture and just dressing up, then it's dishonoring their culture to wear feathers. It is dishonoring their culture. And that is why he did not put on a feather. Thank you very much. Amen.